Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here still not believing my eyes because researching this video, I found 10 dividend stocks that doubled the yield you get on the world's largest dividend ETF, the Vanguard Dividend Appreciation ETF, ticker VIG, holds over $85 billion in investor assets. That is more than a third larger than even the popular Schwab Dividend Fund, the SCHD. And it's easy to see why. The fund has doubled its dividend over the last 10 years and has grown it by 10% a year in the past five. It's also beaten the SCHD on return in nearly every time period, producing a 31% return in the past year against Schwab's 26% and nearly 65% over the past five years against 51% for the SCHD. But start scratching under the surface of this dividend monster and things aren't all rainbows and unicorns. First off, you're not paying the bills on that 1.7% dividend yield. In fact, it's hard to call it a dividend fund at this point. At that point, your dividend payment might just cover your Netflix subscription if you're sharing it with 10 other people. Now, part of this is something we've been talking about on the channel lately. Dividend stocks have just outrun their payments, causing those yields to plunge. You could have bought the Vanguard VIG last year at $152 a share, and the fund had paid a dividend of $3.16. That means the yield, the dividend divided by that price, was a more respectable 2% at that time. But after the 31% jump in the price of the stock, even an 8% jump in the dividend amount can't save this yield. Or still, and something most investors don't know until it's too late, I dug deeper into the fundamentals of the Vanguard ETF and found a dividend fund on the edge. Companies in the fund are growing earnings by just 4.7% on less than 6% sales growth. And that is a huge problem if you think about it. A company only growing its profits by 4.7% can't very well increase the dividend by much more. That makes the 10% dividend growth in the VIG ETF unsustainable. Companies in the fund are also already paying out 45%, nearly half of their earnings to cover that dividend. Remember, the payout ratio is a key measure of dividend growth and sustainability. A company paying out more of its earnings as a dividend isn't holding much back for growth. Let's put it this way. On a $4 per share dividend and $4.70 in earnings, Paychex is paying out 83% of its profit just to meet that dividend which is just about enough left over to reinvest in some office coffee pods and a hang in there poster. Now the fund's overall payout ratio isn't dangerously high, though it is getting there for a few of these companies individually. But what really shocked me was how expensively the stocks have gotten in this fund. Investors in the Vanguard VIG are paying a price of over 30 times the earnings for companies in this fund. That's more expensive than even the overall market, which itself is trading at a multi-year high. The P.E. ratio on the S&P 500 index is as high as it's been since the post-pandemic boom or any time in the last two decades. So Nation, this fund may not be all you think it is, but I've got a solution for you. I dug into the Vanguard VIG to find the 10 best dividend stocks in the fund. What I found was 10 stocks that almost doubled the dividend yield, boost growth, and gets you a 27% discount on the price. I'm going to highlight those stocks along with what to look for in your dividend investments. First on our list, Philips 66, ticker PSX, with its 3.7% dividend yield, one of the highest in the Vanguard ETF. And now one of the reasons I like PSX besides that dividend is it gives you a different exposure than what you might already have with your other oil stocks. While you probably have plenty of exposure to the drilling and production side with Chevron or, or another favorite of mine, Diamondback Energy, PSX gives you exposure to downstream, to the customers, through chemicals and refinery. So then holding PSX along with other oil stocks really diversifies out your energy sector exposure. Now earnings across the sector have suffered with those higher spending over the last few years, but revenue growth is still solid. And at $60 plus oil, these companies are very cash flow positive. Shares of PSX are trading for just 11.3 times on a price to earnings basis, the cheapest stock on our list, which means you're getting a great deal and a high yield. Shares of Pepsi, ticker PEP, surprised me at only 4% higher over the last year, but with a 3.2% dividend and some solid long-term value. And while Buffett may love his Coca-Cola, Pepsi offers the higher dividend yield and a better value in the shares. The company is also better diversified across snacks and its Quaker breakfast brand, a lineup it can leverage to cross-promote for growth. And Pepsi has also shown that commitment to shareholder cash return, increasing its dividend for 52 consecutive years, and at a 7.7% pace since 2010. Like most consumer staples, the company has struggled with inflation and a price-conscious consumer lately, so earnings have fallen over the last year along with sales, but we're going to see a return to that long-term trend of 3 to 5% annual revenue growth. The payout ratio has crept up, but it's still okay for a company with this kind of stability in its cash flows. The P.E. ratio has come down a little. I would say, though, these are shakier fundamentals than most of the others on the list, so 
If you were cutting one or two stocks out, this might be one to pass. We're just getting started on our list, but you know I've got to send that special shout out to all you out there in the nation. Thank you for spending a part of your day to be here. If you're not part of that community yet, just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. PNC Financial Services, ticker PNC, is surprising in the fact that the shares are up 70% in the last year and still paying a 3.4% dividend. The bank has grown its net interest margin and should continue to see improvement as the Fed lowers rates, but it's also done well on fee growth in its capital markets and advisory activity. Revenue and earnings growth are still recovering from that weak environment over the last two years with, with higher rates, but the bank increased its book value, that basic measure of value, by 9% in the previous quarter from last year. Shares are trading for just 15 times earnings, and the payout ratio of 52% here leaves plenty of room for growth. Shares of Medtronic, ticker MDT, pay a 3.1% dividend and have been recovering from the sell-off on weight loss drugs last year. You might remember, device maker stocks got hit hard last year on that fever over GLP-1 weight loss drugs as investors worried that this new drug would hit related diseases like diabetes, but Medtronic and others have recouped most of those losses, and the market realizes these GLP-1s aren't the miracle cure they thought, and the device market is still growing. The company could also get a boost from the AI theme. Medtronic already has six AI products already FDA approved from its intelligent endoscopy tool that decreases miss rates on polyps by a factor of 2x to systems for surgery imagery and neurosurgery. In the large diabetes market, the company has its Minimed meal detection algorithm to simplify diabetes management, automatically adjusting insulin delivery every five minutes. Revenue is growing at a strong double-digit pace, and the company is only paying out a third of its earnings as a dividend, so lots of room there for reinvesting in that growth. It's a little more expensive on the PE basis, but you expect it for this kind of growth. Another stock that seems to be popping up on my dividend list lately, Target Corporation, ticker TGT, with its 3% yield. While a lot of the dollar and discount stores have been struggling lately with the inflation and consumers dealing with it, it seems Target and Walmart are taking market share to really consolidate that grocery and retail business. While we haven't seen that translate yet to growth, with sales up low single digits for Target, it could translate to a much faster growth when the consumers stop pulling back. Until then, Target is cutting back on its own costs to leverage those sales into higher earnings, boosting profits by 42% in the last quarter, and is undervalued here at 15 times on a PE basis. The stocks in this video are some of my favorite dividend stocks, but if you've ever wondered what's in my portfolio or want to see the stocks I'm buying right now, you can by joining me on the Blossom Social Investing app. The app was created by investors for investors. I just started using it last year and love it for getting ideas and sharing my portfolio. And this is so much more than just another social network. You can connect your brokerage accounts or just input your portfolio to track all your stocks in one place. You're going to see insights like portfolio percentages and average dividend yield across the entire group. You'll also be able to join more than 150,000 investors in the social feed to see what everyone else is talking about. I've shared my portfolio on the app and it's totally free to download. So look for the special invite link I'll leave in the description and check that out. Rounding out that oil stocks exposure here is ExxonMobil, ticker XOM, with its 3.2% dividend yield. Of course, Exxon is a giant company with its own downstream business, but it's still mostly production or upstream oil company. This growing products group you see here at $1.7 billion in sales is just a fraction of the nearly $350 billion in annual revenue. So pairing this with something like a Philips 66 makes perfect sense, giving you complete exposure to the energy space. Now you out there in the nation know I prefer drillers like Diamondback Energy and Devon, but neither of them are in the VIG, so for this video, they couldn't make the list. But XOM is a solid pick in oil stocks as well, with double-digit revenue and earnings growth. The payout ratio is higher than Phillips, but still around the industry norms, and the shares are attractively priced. Sempra, ticker SRE, pays just under 3% yield, but is a very dependable pick in the utility space. Sempra is a relatively small utility with business in California and Texas, but with a growing infrastructure unit and growth in its LNG plants. The dividend has grown at a steady 5% pace over the last five years, and earnings growth, even in the face of revenue weakness, should keep that payout growing. This payout ratio is actually very low for a utility company, which just shows you the kind of a reinvestment Sempra is doing into future growth. We still got three more dividend stocks to highlight, but I know what you're thinking. Buying all these stocks individually is a huge pain. Why not just buy the VIG, get all the stocks together, and take the bad with the good? Well, it's because behind those overall numbers, some of the stocks in this fund are a train wreck waiting to happen. Just within the top 100 stocks, 24 of them, a full 1 in 4 stocks, pays a dividend of less than 1%, and 
and 38 of the companies have seen their earnings plunge, some by 70 and 80%. How long can a company continue to pay its dividend with earnings crashing like that? Top it all off, some of these are already showing dangerously high payout ratios, paying out more than their earnings to cover that dividend. Next on our list though, IBM is the perfect example of what the bull market has done with dividends, with the stock now paying just 3.1% after a 43% run in the stock price. Now I still do like the stock for our best of list, but had you bought it last year at around $140, the $6.64 dividend would have meant a 4.7% yield at that price. Since then, IBM has leveraged more than a decade in building its AI services and is finally able to capitalize on it. The company is part of the dividend champions list, growing its dividend for 30 consecutive years and booked 16% earnings growth in the last quarter. The payout ratio is a little high here, but will continue to drop as those earnings take off. Pharmaceuticals giant Amgen, ticker AMGN, is next here with its 2.9% dividend. And I really like how this list is coming out with stocks from different sectors. All you out there in the Bowtie Nation know how important that is, especially when it comes to a dividend stocks list, because it means a crisis in any one or two sectors of the economy aren't going to kill your cash flow. By having stocks from different sectors, you're going to diversify your exposure. As a $170 billion drug maker, Amgen always has a solid pipeline and the financial power to acquire it. Product sales jumped 20% in the last quarter, and more importantly, it was on volume growth rather than higher prices, so keeping Amgen out of the headlines for high drug prices. Now, while revenue growth was very strong, Amgen has been spending heavily on R&D, which explains that 45% drop in its earnings for the quarter, but pipeline spending should eventually translate to those earnings as well. It's the most expensive stock on our list, mostly because of the earnings drop, but it's still safe here on its payout ratio. We're talking the Vanguard Dividend ETF in this video, but you can do the same thing with any dividend fund, picking out the best stocks to put more cash in your pocket. In fact, we did just that with the Schwab Dividend ETF, the SCHD, a few weeks ago for a 5.3% dividend yield. That is 76% more than we were able to get with these VIG stocks, so check out that video here next to see those stocks. Discover Financial Services, ticker DFS, is the only stock under 2% yield, and I struggled with whether to include it here, but I wanted a financial services name, and the company has been dominating the industry on sales and earnings growth. DFS booked 60% revenue growth and 41% earnings in its most recent quarter and is still trading at just 11 times on a PE basis. Tremendously cheap for that kind of growth. It's also the lowest payout ratio in the group, which means this one could have that strongest dividend growth as it pays out those earnings to investors. And here's that entire list of 10 stocks and you see here we've almost doubled the dividend yield to 3% and gotten a big boost of potential growth. Revenue for these 10 companies is growing at nearly twice the rate we see in the VIG stocks and while earnings growth is about the same, that sales growth should translate into faster earnings and then dividend growth. The payout ratio is about the same as well, just a little higher because of the payouts from Pepsi and IBM, but it's this, this PE ratio that really got me going. At just 22 times on a price to earnings basis, you're getting a 27% discount and a great price for this group of stocks. Join me on the Blossom Investing app with the invite link in the description below and see all the stocks in my portfolio or click on the video to the right for the dividend stocks that beat the SCHD and get you a 5% yield. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.